What a year 2021 for the standout wrestler. He won an NCAA Division I National Championship. He made Team USA. He went to the Olympics and won Olympic gold in dramatic fashion, backflip included. Now the pride of the University of Minnesota has options, plenty of options. University of Minnesota return, MMA, pro wrestling, pro football, etc., etc. Champion Gable Stevenson, thank you so much. With all these accomplishments, where does sitting ringside next to WWE Chief Brand Officer Stephanie McMahon at NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver during WrestleMania week rank for you? Um, it, it ranks high up there. You know, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie's a great lady and she's doing her job. And so to, to be next to her was a very cool thing. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it is up there. Well, did you get to meet any of the NXT superstars and talk to them a little bit? Yeah, I met a lot of them and talked to all of them, so it was cool to see them and, and see everyone else. Did you get to attend WrestleMania too, as well? Yes, I was at. Yeah, I was at WrestleMania. Have you ever been to a WrestleMania before? Was that your first? That was my first time. What did you think of that whole thing? It was at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, two nights. It was a. Uh, it was cool. I mean, a lot of people, a, lot of, a good amount of people there. You know, everybody came and was loud and, and had a good time. So, I mean, it was very cool. Who were some of the superstars you got to meet, or did you get to meet any during WrestleMania? Um, I got to meet um, Roman Reigns. Uh, Roman Reigns. I'm blanking right now. <laughs> Bobby Lashley? And the Fiend, and like a bunch of others, like Titus, um, The Fiend, um, Bobby Lashley, a lot of those guys. So, I mean, it was cool to see all of them. Did they give you any advice, or was it just more of a, hey, how you doing type of a com conversation? Uh, no advice, it was just, hey, how you doing type thing. And what was it like for you, being a longtime fan, to be able to go to these events and meet these larger-than-life personalities, which someday you may become? Um, it was cool, I mean, um, to, to meet with them and be over there was, um, was something special, just because, I mean, that could be my future path, so... We're going to see how it goes and all that. Well, now, in the NFL, when a MVP is named for the Super Bowl, they're going to Disney World. When you win Olympic gold, you got somewhere cool you're going this weekend. Where are you going, Gable? Um, I'm going to SummerSlam this Saturday, so I'll be over there doing my thing and meeting everybody once again. That is just so awesome, and being such a big fan. Now, I don't know if you got to see the car jet for that, but if you have, are there any matches that stand out? And if not, are there just any superstars you'd want to see when you're there at SummerSlam? Um, we, we tend to watch everybody now at Roman Reigns, so that's where I'm going. And it's interesting because Roman Reigns, obviously, he's the head of the table, the tribal chief, etc. He is the champion, and he's with Paul Heyman, and you've had conversations with Paul Heyman in the past? You know Paul Heyman? Yeah, I know Paul Heyman personally. You know, we had conversations about that. So, um, you know, he, he, he's doing his thing. He's a great person. Um, they can set everything as well for Roman Reigns. But, you know, this Saturday, a lot of people are coming for John Cena, but we want to see Roman come out on top. And, you know, John Cena is a, a hell of a person too. So it will be a great battle. Yeah, it will be. This is one of those iconic battles. Kind of reminds me too when John Cena and The Rock faced off right in Miami Gardens for WrestleMania when it was here in Miami. Now you have John Cena returning, and it's Roman Reigns, the one on top, and they're going to battle and go at it. And then obviously, John is having a, a very good career in movies and making movies. And Gabe, I know you're so young, but you even think of things like that, like where pro wrestling, sports entertainment could lead to other things too, TV shows, movies, other things like that. Do you even think that far ahead or not Not at this point? Yeah, I've already thought that far ahead. I mean, that's my end goal to get to that point. And so, I mean, we're going to take it one step at a time, but that is a thought that I've thought about. It's amazing, too, with The Rock. Have you got a chance to meet The Rock at all? No, that's the, that is the one person I'm waiting to meet. And obviously, there is a connection between him and Roman Reigns. There's a family connection there as well. It's, it's very interesting. And there's... Thoughts down the road, who knows that maybe there'll be a Roman Reigns versus Rock match. And I'm curious your thoughts if that happens. Um, I'm, I'm currently 
probably not sure if that happens. You know, Brock is in retirement. He's sitting and doing his thing at home. So I'm not sure that will happen. But who knows? I mean, for the right thing, Brock will come back and, and make a return. That's all I know. And right, we don't know if that's going to happen, of course. And Rock is doing so well with so many other things. But I'll put you on the spot if it did happen. Who's Gable Steeson cheering for in that one? <laughs> oh, you know, we cheer for the hometown legend, Brock Lesnar. You know, we can't, we can't cheer for nobody else. When Brock comes back, it's, all, it's for Brock Lesnar, so people know that. <laughs> so with that said, hey, did you get to hear from Brock after you won your Olympic gold? He's a man of few words, so when he texts or something like that, you know, it means a lot. So, so to be able to hear from him right after the match was something cool, and it, it was special. And again, down the road, we don't know what's going to happen. You have decisions to make, but it's it's fun talking about. What would it be like if Gable Steveson got in the, a wrestling ring, pro wrestling ring, WWE ring, to face Brock Lesnar? I mean, that's, that's a historical event because, you know, two Minnesota kids going at it, you know, um, national champs, Olympic champs. Um, you got the the gold medalist going at the NCAA gold medalist. So, I mean, that's a historical matchup that people be waiting for. And if that time comes, which it may, who knows? But that time comes, we'll see what it. We'll see what the end result is. But I know where I know what the end result might be. I'm curious to see if that does happen. Where Paul Heyman stands on that one. <laughs> nah, he, he, you know, he's standing on the right side, but both of both of them people are the right side for him. But so he's gonna have to be outside the ring. You know, watching, watching the duties happen. He's going to have to be in the middle. He'll have to be Switzerland and stand in the middle of that one. He'll have, whoever wins, he'll be happy with. Right, yeah. Hey, did you ever think, too, that maybe down the road tag teaming with Brock Lesnar? Um, I haven't thought that, that that far down the road. You know, I like to take a one step at a time. So, um, I thought about um, wrestling Brock and having him come back for one time. And, and so, um, to be able to step in the ring with him and and have it go out like that would be something cool. But um, down the road, I haven't thought about tag teaming. Like I said, Brock is living a happy retirement, doing what he wants, and I like for him to. I like for him to decide that. Well, Gable, another outstanding amateur slash professional wrestler, sports entertainer, Kurt Angle, and he won Olympic gold as well as you did. I'm curious, have you been in contact at all with Kurt after winning the medal or before? No, just after. I mean, Kurt said his congratulations in, um, via Instagram DM, and he posted a picture of me on his Instagram, which was cool. So, I mean, you know, Kurt Angle, he led you, you know, broken neck, everything, Olympic gold. I mean, who knows, there could be a second Olympic gold medalist in the, the WWE World Cup, too, and you see what happens to the first one, he turned into a legend. So maybe the second one might do the same thing. So we have no clue yet, but we will find out. Would that be another dream match for you if that's the career you end up going into? Uh, no, I haven't really thought of a dream match with Kurt. But I think it would be cool to see who's the baddest gold medalist on the, on the face of the planet Earth. You know? So I, why not? And I'll tell you what, there's another University of Minnesota graduate standout wrestler by the name of Shelton Benjamin. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have you talked to Shelton at all? Uh, whether prior to winning the Olympic gold or, or after winning the Olympic gold? No, I talked to Sheldon at WrestleMania, and that was the last time I spoke to him. But, uh, you know, I'll probably see him this weekend and reach out, so we'll, we'll get to talk in when I see him again. What's it about University of Minnesota cranking out all these great professional wrestlers, superstars? <laughs> it's the right place to be. You see, all you, you see everybody comes in dedicated with a good support system and so to Minnesota there you know, be an accolade of heavyweight that's, that's nothing new to what we do and for us to go out there and perform is something that we do also what was the Olympic experience like for you and it was just interesting to see even before the Olympics in international competition how dominant you were against international talent and then the last match was incredible that was just to see him come back and then you come back and dramatic finish at the end. But what was it like for you just dominating as much as you have been on that level? Um, you know, um, I mean, it, it is cool for me to go overseas when I was younger and, and, and do a good job over there and, and make a statement on my name early out in the game. And so for me, that was some, some cool. So when I went out there this past, uh, last weekend and, and performed and did a good job, I mean, um, it was just it was 
was just something that I was into and, you know, something that I was ready to do. So, I mean, people saw what happened. It's hard for me to explain what happened. But, I mean, if you want to you wanna win gold medals, you wrestle to the last second. It's so inspiring, too. And that was a big thing as well. Not just winning, but how you won. What did it mean to you afterwards when you're seeing a lot of tweets and a lot of getting a lot of messages and seeing on NBC and on all different places that it was like even that message and you giving that message of never giving up? Um, I mean, it was just a message to the kids out there that um, a, lot of, a lot of people ain't, ain't, they don't have to keep themselves. So prior for me to put that out with some special to a lot of people because, um, you know, never feel it always about everybody's life. You know, everybody got different life life games that go on. And so for me to say that probably was a lot to a lot. And then when you did end up getting the gold medal and all the prestige and honor that comes with it, what does that mean to Gable Steveson with all the work and all the time and the effort and the family support and coaching support that was there? Um, it means a lot, you know what I'm saying? It, it means everything to, to bring home that gold medal, you know. It's an Olympic gold medal. Not a lot of people touch that. that is it. I touched that at a very young age, and it's cool that I reached that point. Now, on Twitter, I was reading, too, on even some of your tweets and others about the Buffalo Bills, the Minnesota Vikings, where Brock Lesnar had a tryout, for those that didn't know, uh, many years ago, several years ago, as well, after attaining success with WWE and then returning later. And I'm just curious, from your standpoint, what does the NFL mean to you? Because I know that's not your primary sport, but you're so athletic. But it's just interesting to me that professional football teams are now looking at you and giving you that avenue to look at as well. I mean, like I said, it's cool that all these options have opened, um, you know, especially with uh, football coming about and a lot of other things. Um, it is it is somewhat outrageous, and I never thought I'd see this point, but I'm here now, and I'm going to soak it in and take it one step at a time. Well, Gable, I know you have decisions to make, but what are... <laughs> Not necessarily what are you going to make, but just how do you go through that process? And is it with other people that are involved with you to sit down and talk with them and, and go over things? How does that process work? Because it, it's so it's just so amazing to me and, and others too. Pat McAfee did an interview with you and just the world is your oyster, he said. And it's so true. How do you go through this? Pro You're so young as well. How do you go through this process? Um, just one step at a time. Um you know, letting family and all that be involved is a cool thing, but at the end of the day, it's my decision. I'm gonna make the best decision for me. And so, to be able to have everyone involved is something special. And we'll, we'll make all the right decisions together and, and go from there. Well, I will ask this one, because I think this is important, but it's, it's to each his own. But I'm curious too, is earning the degree, the college degree, where do you put that? Even if you're in other ventures, is that something, though, too, you still want to finish and make sure you get your degree? Oh, yeah, most definitely at some point I'm going to have that piece of paper. You know, that piece of paper holds a lot of weight to it, too, just like an Olympic gold. And so that paper means a lot to me, too. So it, it, it's up there most definitely. It is important. It's always good to have backup. But you have so many options. It's just amazing. Hey, this is interesting, too. Jake Hager of AEW called you out a little bit. <laughs> And I'm just curious, because this listen, he has credentials. It's it's been he was at University of Oklahoma. He was an All American, but he was saying like you, that giving you a, a takedown challenge. You can't take me down, that type of thing and all. But just what are your thoughts of of Jake calling you out a little bit? <laughs> um, I think that's a crazy call on his part. You know, um, I mean, he wanted to make something happen out of that, and I mean, it was cool that he he reached out for that point, but. I think it's a crazy call out trying to ask me to a takedown tournament. You know, I've never heard of his um, his wrestling accolades in college. And so, even if he is a two-time All-American, I mean, guys nowadays would pummel him because guys nowadays are athletic. Back in the day, a lot of these heavyweights back in the day compared to now are a lot different style-wise and athletic-wise. So, I mean, if you want to a takedown tournament, whatever. But um, I think he probably doesn't have 20 seconds in him just because I mean, you've seen what I've done to a lot of guys in the, the wrestling world today, and so especially in the United States. And I think um, his athletes don't really mean nothing. You don't got a national championship or Olympic gold, and 
that call out was foolish on his part, and he got to play his role in AEW, and he should stay over on that side. Hey, and I'm curious too, and, and Jake's a bigger guy, but you've handled bigger guys and all, but I'm curious in this regard, have you spoken with anyone at AEW? And is that something that might interest you as well? I know you're a big WWE fan, but AEW's out there as well as others. What are your thoughts of that group? No, I haven't spoken to nobody at AEW, but I see AEW out there putting, putting in a big spotlight for themselves. And, you know, they got a lot of fans tweeting me on Twitter, so that, that is kind of cool, too. Um, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I haven't gotten no text from nobody over there. I haven't got mentioned to nobody over there. So we'll see if they reach out. If they do, they do. If they don't, you just be people and go to the next day. I, don't, I haven't heard them. Well, I'll say this, whether they do or not, obviously you have so many options, and obviously WWE is interested, Paul Levesque, Triple H, Stephen McMahon, Mr. McMahon, that whole group there, and it's, it's just great to have all these options, and even with Pro Wrestling Sports Entertainment to have all different options there as well, you've seen everything there, and, and two things I wanted to ask you as well, because you did mention, and I mentioned Bobby Lashley, and he was mentioning a one of his tweets about maybe having you join the Hurt Business. <laughs> what are your thoughts of the Hurt Business and joining him and MVP? <laughs> you know, him and the MVP got something special going on over, over there. I mean, a lot of people are tapped in. And, you know, I've, I've noticed the work that um, they put in, and it is something cool. So, I mean, Bobby, you have my you have my Instagram, you have my Twitter, my phone number. You you sent out the message, so come say what's up when I, when I see you Saturday at SummerSlam. And hey, Gable, Bobby and also Brock were able to, and it's not easy, but they were able to do MMA and professional wrestling and work it out, where they were able to do it si sort of simultaneously. They would take time off and all. Do you think that's an option, something in there, too, that you might be able to pull off two and one if you decide to go that route? Yeah, I think that is a big option, and I think I could pull it off. You know, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort, but... Um... I feel like I got it in me to do all that, and like I said, we'll, we'll see if that road comes about, and just, just take it one day at a time. That's how I like to do it. Are you a UFC fan, or is that more a business for you? Nah, I'm a UFC fan. Who are some of the UFC ones? And I saw Daniel Cormier talking about you as well. So many. I mean, all these names. You can do a who's who's list of people just, just talking so positively about you and all. But who in UFC? Is there anyone in particular or a few standouts there that you look at and that you're into fan wise uh dana white has reached out to me which is probably the coolest thing but um john jones bc those guys a lot of people reached out you know but i mean john jones has been reaching out for a long time bc too but um dana white was the most definitely the best one yeah what was it like talking to dana he is so passionate and so into what he does and and helping build ufc to what it has become what was it like and to speak to dana I mean, it was cool speaking to Dana. Um, most definitely something different. He's into it. He he, he does a, he does his job and business wise well. So um, I mean, it is consideration, but but step by step right now, and I'll see how that goes. Well, that's wild, man. You never know who's going to be tweeting or calling you, Gable. <laughs> when you're looking at your phone and seeing like all these people calling and all, how do you just keep yourself humble? I <laughs> uh, just you know stay level headed. Ain't not a big deal, to be honest. It's just tweets and calls, and it's just it's what I do, and it's the sport I'm in, it's the profession that I've lived in. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's nothing serious. It's just calls and fake times, but people can't get caught up in doing all that. But me, I don't really like to get caught up in stuff like that. Hey, how's your brother Bobby doing? And is he training to become a professional wrestler? Um, he's doing good. Um, he's uh, he's getting down to the performance center right now, and so he'll make his um, he'll be down there training to be ready to go when it's his time. That would be so cool because I don't know if you would remember the Steiner brothers, Rick and Scott. They were University of Michigan grads. Oh well. <laughs> but they were very good amateur wrestlers and they made a nice transition to professional wrestling. And actually, I want to say, let's see, is it, it's Rick's, Rick's son is at the Performance Center training as well. And I'm just curious, did you and your brother ever think of becoming like this 
famous tag team down the road so at some point? No, we have never thought about it. We've never talked about it. So I'm not really sure what he thinks about it, but I mean, it could be a cool little deal, a little option, but who knows? Yeah, it would be cool if the Steiner brothers were there or not, but if they were still wrestling. I think Scott does, but I don't think Rick does anymore to see the Steveson brothers against the Steiner brothers. That would have been money. That would have been a good one and all. Hey, I'll, I'm going to wrap this up. I do want to ask you this because Seth Rollins, WWE superstar extraordinaire, he tweeted out that he would like to train you. And I'm just letting you know right now, be careful, Gable. Don't trust this guy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we we know about Seth Rollins. You know, he's, he's pulling up with these new suits, looking high fashionable, doing his job. And I did see the call out. I did see he wanted to wanted me to come train with him. So we'll see what that we'll, we'll see what that's about. And like I said, I, I'll see him in person Saturday at SummerSlam. Hey, now, no disrespect to this guy, but if you do sign with WWE, will Chad Gable have to change his name? Yes. <laughs> Right away, too. <laughs> yes. I agree. I agree. I agree there. Oh, my gosh. Hey. And then lastly, American Top Team and Sanford MMA are two big MMA training centers. And they're both based in South Florida, actually. We know WWE Performance Center is based in Orlando. I'm just curious if you had any discussions with ATT or Sanford MMA. The great Greg Jones is at Sanford MMA, and I know Steve Mako, another great, is at America Top Team. But I'm just curious because I know you're up in the Minnesota area, up in that way, but are you any thoughts or any talks with anything down here? Dan Lambert of ATT is a big pro wrestling fan, actually. He's been on AEW a few times now. <laughs> uh, you know, right now I think Sanford is a, is a good thing. Um, Sanford's got a great program over there with, with Greg Jones. You know, we got a couple of Minnesota alumni like Storley and McKee there right now. So, you know, um, Sanford has got, got a good program going on there. They built out, they branched out. So, you know, they got the Pentagon in South Dakota. And, you know, Bellator is going to be there this Friday. So that would be some cool. But, um, you know, I, I am signed with Ace and Dave Martin. A lot of Sanford Pentagon guys and Sanford MMA. So, you know, we locked in over there for now. I got it's really good, and I didn't know that with Logan. Logan's doing fantastic. What what a job he's doing and all. It's amazing. And with that, are there other fighters who you fought against? I mean, there must be a ton of them that you fought against and uh, and wrestled against. I should say that are in UFC, that are in Bellator, that are in all these different top organizations and all. What is it like when you're You've competed against them, and now you're seeing them succeed in, in MMA. Uh, I mean, I, like I, everybody has their own path, you know. Um, I'm gonna take my own path. They got their own path, but you know, there'll be a lot of people that wrestle try to take the fighting route, which is which is known because that's like our pro. But who knows? Um, everybody's got their own way. Everybody's gonna do their own thing, and that's about it. Got nothing left else to say. And Gable, you're heading out to Las Vegas, as we said, for SummerSlam, which is Saturday, August 21st. Huge event, WWE. It's probably their second biggest show of the year after Mania. So you've been at Mania, now you're going to be at SummerSlam. Who knows? Might we see Gable Steveson jump in the ring? <laughs> um, who knows? I cannot say nothing about that. <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm hoping nobody tries to test you, Gable, because they're gonna they're gonna have a rude awakening if they do. 